This is Twit. Rob was teasing me. He's like, oh, I didn't want to bring it up. I would get blamed for making you buy one. I was like, no, no, Rob. I'm going to buy one of these just as soon as I can find one available at MSRP. That's an instant buy. And that is, of course, that the Raspberry Pi CM5 is now, uh, well, in theory, it's available. Last time I checked, it was a little difficult to actually find it in stock anywhere. Uh, November 27th is the announce date. And uh, yeah, it's the Raspberry Pi 5 in the CM form factor. Um, there's a couple of there's a couple of interesting things with this. Uh, with the release, they also have a new carrier board, which has some fun tricks to it. And then, of course, there are a couple of other um, you know other companies have have started making things that the CM5 specifically will plug into. Now, the pinout is almost pin for pin compatible with the CM4. It is the same. Um, it, it is the same pin header. In fact, I've got one here. Of course, of course I do. Of course I have a, a, a Pi CM4, to be clear. The CM4 here, let's see if I can get my camera to focus on it. Um, and that is, you know, that is the form factor. And it's got those two rows of snap together pins, those headers. And so basically anything that you can plug a CM4 into, you can plug the CM5 into because it is it is basically pin for pin compatible. The difference is that, I guess a couple of differences. One, the PCIe slot can be put into PCIe 3 mode, which doubles the bandwidth, which is a really nice upgrade. Um, but the other difference is that they are exposing some USB 3 ports rather than you know just, I, I forget what exactly those pins were used for, but there's some actual USB 3 ports that are exposed. And that is because the, the Raspberry Pi 5, the SOC on it actually has native USB 3. Whereas in the past, they had to use PCIe lanes to do that. Um, now the downer, the thing that is just a little disappointing for everybody is that it exposes the same number of PCIe lanes as the CM4. The CM4 and the CM5 expose the same number of PCIe lanes. So if you had, if you had thoughts of, um, you know, putting a video card on one set of lanes and an NVMe on the other set of lanes and having like a full blown desktop out of the CM5, fortunately, it's not quite that easy. Um, but you do have the full speed USB three, which for a lot of things is almost just as good. Uh, you can hang a pretty performant network connection off of that, for instance. Um, and so the, uh, the <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of interesting because a lot of us, like I said, we were hoping for more lanes. So, like for example, the 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 Turing Pi two that I run, uh, I run RK ones in it right now. I would really like to be able to get some CM fives in it. That thing is designed for having multiple PCIe lanes, and so we're kind of in a position now where we can't support all of those things. And I have put a call in just on Twitter. It's not like I have a, a real good back channel to them, but I put a call into the the Turing Pi guys and saying. We need a version of the board that instead of, you know, connects the stuff on the top of the Turing Pi to one, one thing that the lanes would go to, we need to be able to connect it to the other lanes. And uh, let's come up with a way to do that. We'll see if that ever actually happens. Um, but for the majority of people, it's going to be just a straight upgrade. Because like I said, it's pin for pin compatible with almost anything. You can just drop it in. It'll work. And it's a significant speed uplift versus the uh, the Pi 4 and the CM4. Uh, and of course, Raspberry Pi OS is just, it's great. Um, and there are some other options that run that same kernel. Uh, the upstream support for the Pi 5 and the CM5 in the upstream kernel, not great yet, although with 612, some things have landed. It'll actually, it'll, it'll boot. I think you can actually get some video output, but you know, it doesn't have full acceleration, video acceleration and all that yet. Um, but yeah, it's a cool little device, and I am, I am of course gonna, I'm gonna buy some, and I'm gonna stick them into things, and and uh, have some fun with it. I know, <clears throat> I know all the stuff. I think was all there in previous compute modules. I just haven't paid too much attention to the previous ones, but I just like the idea of having the PoE and like a NVMe card, and having something that's almost somewhat self-contained with nothing more than a. Ethernet cable dangling off of it. Mm -hmm. I think I don't know if we talked about it on the show. 
or if it's on the back channel. Like years ago, 20, probably 2014, 2015, I gutted an old Nintendo, put a Raspberry Pi emulator in there and and mirrored the ports as much as possible. But it'd be kind of cool if uh thing was just running off of PoE. <laughs> Yeah, it it is it is fun actually. I very much enjoy doing PoE with Raspberry Pis. I've got some of them around my house. Um, they're like three B pluses and fours. You know, the the first iteration that had the uh, the, the PoE support. I've got I've got in several places. I've got like three gang modules. Um, for, uh, you know, uh, uh, electrical boxes, three gang wide electrical boxes. So like in my office right here, is right up there. I've got one in the ceiling. Ethernet cable run to it. And then just a Raspberry Pi will fit up there with, you know, the, the POE hat. And so I've got that in several places. And that's how I do, like, temperature monitoring in different rooms and, and uh, stuff like that. So you got sensors on them. I, I hang sensors off of them, yes. But, you know, you could do, you could do several different things if you wanted to um, just on that. You know, if I, if I really wanted to, like, I haven't. But if I wanted to, I could. You put a projector up there and have a Raspberry Pi running a display on one of the walls. I mean, that'd be cool. Um, all, kinds of, all kinds of fun stuff. Um, yeah, uh, I, uh, I I think it's I think it's gonna be really interesting for people to just take their existing projects that have the CM4 and just drop the CM5 in it. Um, one other thing that I would be remiss if I didn't mention is you know I talked last week about the Crow View, the Note, this thing, and uh, I even more so want just let me put a compute module in the bottom of it, guys. Make that the version two. Um, one of the things that's interesting is you may know the Pi 400. That's the Raspberry Pi 4 that's just in the keyboard by itself. And uh, I, there have been noises about Raspberry Pi making another one of those. I was talking with Jeff Gearling about it, and he goes, I have been telling Raspberry Pi that they just need to make a keyboard and put a, a compute module slot in the bottom of it and call that the CM500. <laughs> like, that'd be cool. There's so many cool ideas. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, well, I mean, the form factor lets you do a lot of different things. Um, and I, Honestly, I wish more people would pick up on using it. And I think maybe now with the CM5, they will. Because like with, with the CM5, you're actually at the point where you have enough hardware to run it as a desktop. Um, and so, you know, I, I, it would not surprise me if you saw more handhelds and laptop sort of things that will just take a CM5. It doubles the price, though, for people who are buying it because it's cheap. But um, it Does it double the price? You well, can... The, the MSRP is $45. Right. Well, what's the MSRP for the the CM4? No, no, I meant doubles the price of the Raspberry Oh, oh whatever, whatever it is you're buying. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Give yeah. or take. Yeah. But I mean, so... Well, oh, imagine this, though. If they're going to make a Compute Module 6 on the Raspberry Pi 6 in another four years, I don't know. Uh, and it's the same pinout. May or may not be. Um... Then you don't have to buy the carrier device. You just slap a different device in it, so you have the you have the framework Ooh. effect. Uh, yeah, which is like my old gut in Nintendo. That's a Raspberry Pi One. I really should upgrade that, but I haven't like used it in ten years either. <laughs> how cool would it be though to put a Raspberry Pi Five in there and like, oh yeah, let's play some Nintendo and flick it on and be able to emulate GameCube games and Switch games? Yeah, right now about uh, I think the highest it could go is. Maybe Super Nintendo and Sega, I think. Well, I'm sure it could do that, but I don't think it could handle anything newer than that. The horsepower <laughs> difference between a Raspberry Pi 1 and a Raspberry Pi 5 is just unreal. Be doing some Xbox gaming and PlayStation. <laughs> yeah, totally. You certainly can. Hey, it's Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little clip from our programming at twit.tv. For more, visit our website, twit.tv, or subscribe in your favorite podcast client. There's also a link somewhere down there. <laughs>